to this Power of Praise program. I'm so happy to have you joining me today for a time of praise and worship. If you love praise and worship songs and great old hymns of the church, then you stay with us for just the next half hour. Take a break from your busy day, your busy morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you're watching this program, and come and sing with me. Today's great hymn of the church is Amazing Grace. One of the most beloved and probably the wellest, the, the best known, I should say, him in the last 200 years. And I'm going to be telling you the story behind how that amazing hymn was written. Oh, it's, it's a gripping story and it's a true story. And I want you to know about the writer and the man who wrote Amazing Grace way back in the 1700s. And today it's still sung. Uh, the estimates tell us over 11 million times each year. And it's been put on thousands and thousands of uh, recordings and albums, Amazing Grace. And we're going to sing that at the end of the program, and I'll tell you the story behind that great hymn of the church. And also, um, just singing some new songs and some old songs, and thought I would start with a favorite, which was Scripture. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That is actually Matthew 6.33 that was put to music. So I love the old scripture songs, and uh, it's one of my favorites. There's another one I want to sing. Um, it's this one. And it's from, based off Philippians 1.6. He who began a good work in you. He who began a good work in you. to complete it. 
from the scripture that's opened right here on my piano. Let me read it to you. Paul says in Philippians chapter 1, verse 3, he says, I thank God every time I think of you in all my prayers. And for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on into completion until the day of Jesus Christ. I love this. It's such a great promise. Do you ever feel like, you know, I, I made a commitment to the Lord, but Angela, I've, I don't really feel strong. Listen, you just, you just, you just give the Lord praise right where you are now that God has started a work in you and he will fulfill it. It's the spirit of the living God doing his work in our lives, coming in and causing us to be born again and made new. And it's easy now to sing this song. You sing it as your song from Philippians chapter 1, verse 6 for you, okay? And it's also really interesting in the life of the great hymn of the church. John Newton said, oh, I got saved, but everything didn't change at once. It was a process. That's why I want you to stay for the whole program with me today. There's an anointing. There's a word for your life. So you just sing with me or just sit back and listen. But know this. He who began a good work in you. Yes, I'm talking to you. Everybody that loves the Lord. He who began a good work in you. In you will be faithful to complete it. He'll be faithful to complete it. He who started the work will be faithful to complete it in you.
light of the world You step down into darkness And open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart with me. Here I am. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together Up with you. Hmm. You're wonderful to me, Lord. You're wonderful to me. Sing it again. Come on. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God, the only true and living God. You're all together. Jesus, 
Stay with us. We'll be right back with the great hymn of the church. You are healed. You are healed. Welcome back to the Power of Praise. This is probably one of my favorite parts of the program. When we go back into our history as a church, and recall some of our great old hymns. And today's is probably one of the best loved and definitely one of the best known of all Christian hymns, Amazing Grace. Elvis recorded Amazing Grace. Aretha Franklin recorded Amazing Grace. Ray Charles recorded Amazing Grace. Matter of fact, uh, there's statistics out that is sung over 11 million times a year. And it's been recorded on over 10,000 albums. I tell you, the writer of the song would be blown away to see how his testimony has been a light, a lighthouse for so many people. The words have found common ground in all of our heart. Because before we come to Christ, there's nothing good righteously about us. Oh, we may do good things and do good things for our community and, you know, but outside of Christ, there's no righteousness. And that was a lesson that John Newton, who wrote this song, he penned the poem in 1772. Now think about how long ago that was. Our Declaration of Independence as Americans was not till 1776. But God was moving. Let me tell you something, folks. God moves through every age. Oh, the plan of salvation is moving. Don't you be disheartened. But let me tell you a little bit about John. John Newton's uh, mother was a wonderful Christian. His father was a uh, captain of a ship. And when John's mother died when he was young, about 11 or 12, his dad took him on the boat with him. 1700s. No issues with child labor back then. But in that, um, sadly, Britain, as well as the New World, had brought in slavery from Africa. And for many years, John so hurt by the death of his mother he just hardened his heart to everything good and he got into the slave trade he became blind to the harsh conditions that people were being treated he was blind to the fact that it was tearing up families he was blind to the fact that it was hurting homes and destroying a precious people he was just interested in the commerce but one day he was on the storm on that sea and a storm came that he couldn't navigate through. And remembering his mother's prayers, he just called out to God, if you will save me, I will give you my life. He made it through the storm and then he realized that in a moment of desperation, as hard as he was, as blind as he had become to what was right, there was God's light shining on him in the middle of of the slave trade. You say some people are too lost. No, no, no. You keep praying. Mom and dad and grandmas and grandpas and friends. We keep praying. You never know how God will answer prayer. John did give his life to the Lord, but he didn't make an immediate change. But through time, he began to see that the slave trade had to stop and be stopped. And he was highly influential in the life of a member of parliament named William Wilberforce who for over 40 years fought and argued in Parliament against the slave trade. And it was finally passed, and then America followed soon in the 1800s. But John's story is one he just didn't know if God's grace could reach him. Matter of fact, let me just read you something. This is from his own words. And this came from, remember the first song we did in this program? 
He who began a good work in you will, is able to complete it. Let me tell you what John said after he came to the Lord. He said, Newton prayed to God and made it through the storm and the vessel drifted to safety. He took this as a sign from the Almighty and marked it as his conversion to Christianity, but he did not radically change his ways at once. His total reformation was more gradual. He said, I cannot consider myself to have been a believer in the full sense of the word until considerable time later, he wrote. But he did begin reading his Bible at this point and began to view his captains in a more sympathetic view. You see, when you come to the Lord, all the sudden things that were blind, we begin to see. Because we also know how gracious God has been to us. And we should in turn be gracious to others. And John Newton penned these words. Sung 10 million times. God, if you can save John, you can save anybody. Keep praying and interceding for your family. Because we all need this. Sing with me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Lord, give me your amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saves someone, a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Thank you for joining us on Power of Praise. I'll see you next time. God bless you.